Good evening, guys. I hope you're all well, positive, optimistic, and feeling strong. Um, in tonight's video, we're going to be looking at a practical field test of the different strength and practicalities of the backlights on all the G-Shocks which I own. I hope you enjoy. Okay, now, first up, take a look at this. I think you'll appreciate it. Make a little bit of space here. Open up this pack. Neat little way of keeping the G-Shocks safely tucked away. They wrap into these, uh, this is actually a, a field medical pouch, but um, these elastic sections work nicely to wrap the bezels of the, uh, of the watches into it. Keep them safe, secure, not rattle around too much if you're, uh, if you're on the move and you want to keep your G-Shocks with you. That's how I'm storing some of mine at the moment. Anyway, next point before I get into the actual uh, full video about the backlights themselves. I want to give an update on this, the GA2110 Earth Tone, the, the grey one. Now, as you know, as if you've been watching my videos, I've got five GA 2100s or 2110s. I've got two of, uh, of the blackouts. I've got the yellow 2110. I've got the blue Earth Tone as well, which is here. Um, and I said in a previous video, I think a couple of videos ago, I'm not planning to wear this because it's, I, I believe it's pretty rare. I think it may have been discontinued, although there's some um, question marks about that. Some people are saying it um, probably is still uh, being produced. I don't know. Anyway, I just want to protect it because I, for me, it's one of the prettiest watches I own, the prettiest G-Shocks I own. Anyway, the other day I put it on for whatever reason and... Uh, Guess what happened? I haven't taken it off since. I've literally been wearing this for about a week and a half, two weeks now, and I absolutely love it. It's so versatile in terms of its aesthetics. It works with virtually anything I'm wearing. Um, it's been on with a suit. It's been on in a smart casual environment, done some sports stuff with it, worn it for kettlebells. Ah, what can I say about this watch? Um, if you're looking for one of the GA2100 or 2110 line. I mean, for me, this is currently taking the biscuit, so to speak, not least because it has the wonderful positive display, as mentioned in my previous, one of my previous videos. The rest of these watches have a negative display. And because that digital cluster is so small, that can prove a little bit challenging to, to see. But the positive display of this, plus the color of it, its versatility with what you're wearing, I just absolutely love it. Um, so that's one update. The next update is, watch this. A little bit of a functionality display for you. I'm gonna to go to here. Now, please watch the, sec the, the minute hand. Now, see where the minute hand goes. That's right, just here. Sneaky little way of me saying, please subscribe, guys. Subscribe to the channel, like, really appreciate it. It keeps me, uh, keeps my energy up making these videos. Thanks very much. Now, on to the backlight test. Okay, now the subject of backlights on G-Shock watches is quite an interesting one, at least for me. That's because, as most of you will know if you know about G-Shocks at all, there's, there's a lot of different, different ways that the different watches um, operate in terms of their backlights or illumination. Obviously, you've got your um, illuminated dials or, or hands in this in this case. On the GGB100, the, the actual dial itself has got illuminated sections. Same for the Gravity Master and the GWG1000. However, you then have different forms of um, backlight illumination. Here you have a bottom-based LED in the GGB100, um, in the GA2110, you have it off to the side here, 
a smaller LED. Then you have something like the, you have the wonderful G9300 Mudman. And the backlight on this watch is an all fully illuminating uh, across the back. Now, this is, uh, is wonderful in terms of seeing the actual, all the information on the, on the face that you need to, the digital face that you need to. Here's the GWG1000, one LED sitting at the bottom there, which illuminates the, illuminates the face. Um, and then you have the range man, like the mud man, it illuminates the entire LCD panel. Um, uh, am I missing anything? The Rescue Red, lovely LCD illumination as well. And the Gravity Master. Here you get it right at the bottom left here. So bear in mind, I'm doing this in the, uh, in the presence of a couple of rather bright lights around me so you're not going to see the effects very well right now i'm going to have to do these tests whilst um whilst the lights are off um i also just want to recap on the fact that if you have a torch like this beauty um it's a nightcore mh27 uv uv being the operative letters because that means it's got ultraviolet so you select the watch there you select the torch to uv setting here and then you pick up the watch that has the luminous dials on it and you can see instantly the power of the illumination there when I cover the light is incredible. So this UV light actually supercharges the luminous sections of the watch's face in a rather dramatic fashion and truth be told it stays pretty active for a rather long time. Definitely if you're working in um, a dark environment for a long period of time, um, I am a big believer that if you have a small pocket UV torch with you, you can save yourself a lot of pressing of the, um, of the backlight buttons because the the latent um, luminescence there will remain for a long time. I mean, I'm just covering the light next to me right now, and you can see how powerfully that has affected the Blackout GA2100 there. Um, it does last for quite a long time. Uh, and if you actually do it, and you have the watch like this next to your bed, um, you could illuminate with the UV and Literally hours later, sometimes it can still be charged. Not to the same degree, it does fade, but um, it's, it's definitely a, a very handy trick to know. The GWG1000 looks superb when it's had this kind of UV charging. There, I just cover over the, the light next to me. You can see that is rather powerful and again, will stay, not in that brightness, but will stay for quite some time. Wonderful. So back on to the, the approach to how we're going to do this video. I mean, essentially, yeah, there's, there's three scenarios in my reckoning where you'd want to use the backlight of a watch. And number one is to illuminate your watch to read it, obviously. Um, number two is to see across a room in pitch black. You might be saying that isn't what a watch light is for, but trust me, when you own some of these G-Shocks, you can actually rely on them to do that to some degree. And the third way that you might use a backlight um, on your watch is to read something. Again, they're not designed for that, but in certain some circumstances, they can be used for that. And I'm gonna demonstrate to what degree um, and how effective each watch is in those scenarios. One other note before we start the test is, of course, if you own a classic, uh, like beautiful watch like this old tag here that I have, and have had for many years, um, of course you don't have a light of any kind. You can spend a lot of money on these top end watches and if you get caught in the dark and you need to know what time it is, um, you can 
end up uh, a little bit compromised there. Let's do the loom on the tag to see how it looks when it's had the UV shot on it. And you can see it's pretty good actually. It's nice. Don't get me wrong, I love this, I love this tag, but it just gets virtually no wrist time. Well, it doesn't have any wrist time whatsoever for many years now, simply because these things just trump it from a practical perspective. Okay, next section of the video. So I have each of the watches that I'm going to test on the left-hand side here lined up nicely. I'm going to turn the light off so it's as dark as I can get it. It is nighttime, so it should be getting pretty much uh, a good recreation of being in a darkened room where you need some illumination, you can't find your phone or your phone's out of battery. It's, it's creating that kind of scenario. Um, the lights are gonna go down. I'm gonna turn on the watch light and I'm gonna see to what degree it illuminates this map and beyond. And I will mark on a simple matrix what the watch model is, how well it illuminates the map itself, how far it illuminates it and whether or not uh, it could help actually read the map if you needed to. Here goes the famous Casio F91W. Let's check the face itself. Wow, that is a pretty dull light. How does it illuminate the map? F91W showing pretty poor standards of illumination when in the dark. On to the GA2110 Earth Tone, the grey. Illumination on the dial itself and the LCD, the mini uh, LCD cluster. And here's the GA2110 Earth Tone grey. Lovely colour actually, um, that light blue backlight on the digital cluster. The hands stand out quite nicely and then the light goes off. Very nice. And then we turn it over to see how it illuminates the map. Can certainly do some reading if absolutely necessary. And a little bit of illumination factor there as well. Now on to the Rangeman GW9400. Very nice illumination across the, all the LCD there. This is the blackout version. Rangeman in the dark. Superb clarity on the face for reading or seeing anything else very poor. Now we're going to look at the GGB100 Mudmaster. You can see that LCD, the LED at the bottom and comfortably illuminating the LCD panel as well. GGB100 Mudmaster. Nice loom. Very clear in the face. You can easily re-detail that map with the light of this, of this watch. Very strong, very impressive. And this is what I mean. Some of these G-Shocks you can use to illuminate a large space, a surprisingly large space. Always impresses me. Here is the special edition GA2000. So you can see the two digital light clusters the two digital LCD clusters, nicely illuminated. I should set this to the three second um, illumination rather than one. And the small LED on the bottom right there. Great looking watch. GA2000. Really nice, clear illumination there. Lumin illumination of the map itself. 
you could just about read something. Better than the range man, but not hugely helpful and no real illumination or, or flashlight properties there. Onto the G7900 Rescue Red. You can see big, big um, digital numbers and, and, and display on this watch because my understanding is that it's designed to be on the wrists of people who are bouncing through waves on skiffs and things on, on dinghies at high speed. You want to be able to look at your watch and not be looking at tiny um, numbers. That's why the digital display is so big and a lovely backlight there covering the entire LCD display. G7900 Rescue Red in the dark. Beautiful light, beautiful color. Could just about be used to read a map in extreme circumstances. No illumination properties. Very classy display though, I really like that. Onto the GPW 2000 Gravity Master. It's got this classy color, which kind of really glows. And not only that, you can see as the LED at the bottom left there turns off and turns on, it kind of just slowly creeps in and out. It isn't kind of an analog on or off. It's, uh, it fades in and fades out, which is wonderful. And very good illumination of the, of the face there in this kind of semi-light. GPW 2000 Gravity Master. Nice loom there. On comes the backlight. Incredibly powerful, incredibly strong. Look at this. That is flashlight quality illumination, in my opinion. In fact, if I hold up, you can see it's... This is the problem. It doesn't really do it justice. Um, in this, in this, on this film, it's hard to do it with a, with a camera like this or using the iPad as I am. But honestly, this, this watch itself is lighting. It's got the super illuminator, which will light up a room to a degree where if you need to navigate across that room, it will help you. It's incredible. Even more so than the GGB100. Um, I, this has always amazed me about this watch. From day one, I noticed this. And also bear in mind the watch is solar itself as well. So it's the it's a solar battery, yet it's incredibly powerful and it will light up a room. Mind-blowing. Fantastic work, Casio. Fantastic work, G-Shock. The G9300. Mudman. 12, 13-year-old watch now. That beautiful. I love the color on the back of this, uh, on the backlight of this watch. It's just class. Perfectly illuminates that face. No issues whatsoever in this light. Onto the G9300 Mudman. Wonderful backlight. Illumination of the map. Virtually non-existent actually. And no flashlight properties. And I know we've already done the GA2110 Earth Tone Grey. However, that's got a positive display, so let's check the negative display GA2100, the triple black. You can see it's nicely illuminating the dial there, uh, the, the, the digital cluster. Um, not doing much to illuminate the hands. Blackout GA2100. Digital cluster, great. Hands, not as good as the gray version. Illumination of the map, not bad.
flashlight properties. Not terrible actually, but yeah, they're not going to light up a room to help you navigate. Now onto the GMW B5000. I absolutely love the kind of deep blue hue of the backlight on this watch. One of the prettiest, it's got the pretty factor, this, uh, this backlight. Fantastic, fantastic illumination and quality of light. GMW B5000, the metal square. Such a great clear backlight, love this. Illumination of the map. Not great. You could just about make out some writing if you needed to in a dire circumstance. Virtually no illumination properties in the room. Onto the GWG 1000 Mudmaster. Really nice, bright face there. Let's light up the map. Yep, you can certainly read the map by it. Less of a flashlight illumination properties around the watch, but um, one of the better for illuminating the map. Okay, so let's do the summary of this. I think here's what I've done. Uh, I've listed all the watches that I, I tested. This is on the distance column here. This is the ones how... This is how far each watch can basically illuminate a room. This is the kind of uh, flashlight capacity of the watch. Then how much they helped in terms of reading the map. And then the actual face, the dial itself. Now, one of the main summaries I've, I've noticed is that when it comes to the watches like the Rangeman or the, the Rescue Red here, or the um, G9300, they are basically incredibly good. They've got beautiful um, faces when they're illuminated. Same for the GMW B5000. I mean, you can't really beat them or, or question them. They, they get tens in that respect in terms of the illumination of the face themselves. Um, now, they don't really light up the, the room or the map so good. However, they're not designed to do that. So I really can't complain. The illumination factor is purely something which I, which I find interesting myself and, um, and I use from time to time. And uh, yeah, that's why I've added it as an extra test on here. The other thing to note, I think, is that the GA2000's got a really nice dial actually in the dark. I was very impressed with that. Um, I didn't think it would be so good. I think it's those kind of nice thick hands with the illumination on them, plus the fact that those two mini uh, digital dials clusters are very nicely illuminated as well it just worked very nice for me and was I guess delivered over expectations and then of course we come to the Mudmaster the GGB 100 and the Gravity Master absolutely spectacular results in terms of the illumination of the faces but also illumination of the room in the map you really can map read with these things particularly the gravity master um, I mean I, I really would love to know a bit more about the LED inside this watch and how they make it so powerful whilst also being solar uh, the mud master itself the GGB 100 was good the GWG 1000 really nice um, illumination on the on the dial but in dark conditions you can see, even in the light here, uh, the LED on this battery-powered Mudmaster is much stronger than this solar-powered Mudmaster. Um, that's one of the two differentiating factors between these two Mudmasters. Same name, very different watches in my opinion. Love them both for very different reasons. Um, and yeah, I guess the only other thing that's worth mentioning is that the, the watches, most of these watches have an option to either have the backlight to come on for one second or three seconds i always have mine set on three seconds when i remember to set them up like that um, some of them were set for a shorter duration um, just because i don't think i've adjusted them since i since i bought them new um, but yeah the, the the longer light works better for me like that three second on this gravity master here and of course the other thing to mention is i do 
add a augmented torch to some of my watches. Sometimes I have this flip uh, or swizzle head, swivel head um, torch here, which is incredibly bright. It's uh, very easy, just clip it onto the watch strap like this. So if your hand's free, it pops on there and you can walk around and illuminate around you, no problem. It's also got a red light option here, which doesn't damage your eyes at night. If you um, have bright white light at night, it can sometimes leave kind of after image, which can affect your uh, ability to, to read or drive or something like that. So having a red light option is really nice as well. One final topic that I had to mention when we're talking about backlights is that on these G-Shocks, many of them have the option to have the automatic bike light where you flip your wrist um, through a certain angle and it automatically comes on like that. It's an option that you can have set on or off. I invariably have mine set to on because I just think it's really handy, really smart. Um, the only time when it could be a nuisance is if you wear your watch at night in bed and you have your arms, your, your hands near your head. Uh, you move at night and it comes on when you don't want it. But look, in general, that's unlikely to happen. I just think it's a really, really useful um, addition to these amazing watches. I wanted to make sure that you were aware of that. And, uh, and yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it up. I hope that was really useful, guys. Um, just wanted to actually note if anyone was uh, interested, this pouch, the um, medical field pack, is actually made by a company called Mystery Ranch. And when I bought it a number of years ago, um, I think it was in 2015, they actually made all of these in Mon in the USA. I think it was in Montana itself. Um, and it's just a great, great company. You should check out the website. Really, really quality stuff. Mystery Ranch. Uh, anyway. That's about it, guys. Have a wonderful day.